Uh, yes, indeed, this was the much-anticipated announcement that the Prime Minister made this morning, saying that India has joined the League of an Elite group of nations with the capability of uh, taking down a satellite. Joining us now is the former DRDO chief, Vijay Kumar Saraswat, who is now a member of the Niti Aayog. Uh, Mr. Saraswat, thanks very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Sir, for the benefit of our, all of our viewers, I want you to explain to us the significance of this move. I'm also given to understand that this has been something that India has been working on since 2012 when you were at the DRDO. In fact, I've seen several reports quoting comments from you from 2012 which talk uh, talk about how you, we had the building blocks in place to be able to provide for such an eventuality yes I think you are right uh, after the launch of Agni 5 and also interception of a ballistic missile in an exo atmosphere in 2000 uh, late 11 based upon the confidence of these two projects, I had made a statement that India has the building blocks for demonstrating the satellite uh, interception. Uh, this is, this does not mean that at that point in time, we were 100% ready for doing the launch within zero time. Okay. What we had done at that time was the theoretical simulation mm. of our performance of various technologies and ensuring that based upon this we will be able to demonstrate a kill provided we are given a clearance and mm. we also work on one or two years of uh, developing the missing links which were one or two missing links at that time so this was presented uh, to the press to the government and to everybody that India is now ready for taking on an anti-satellite launch program. Mm -hmm. Just to take that conversation forward, sir, you said that there were a few missing links in 2012 that needed to be put in place. And obviously those have been put in place. One of the considerations for not going ahead with an actual test of this kind to target uh, a, a live satellite was the issue of debris and that was a comment that you made as well that such a test risk showering lethal debris in space that could damage existing satellites instead india's asat capability would be fine-tuned through simulated electronic tests so this was one of the significant considerations weighing against carrying out a test an actual test which is why the simulation route was preferred No, when I am talking of simulation, it is a ground-based simulation. It is not the attack of a uh, of a interceptor against an electronically simulated target. Mm. No, we had planned at that time that we will do the demonstration in two steps. First step would be to go for an electronically simulated satellite and then do an interceptor, real interceptor. Okay. And having obtained success on that, we would go for the real satellite and do show its interception. That was our plan, which we have put across to the government. And uh, th that would have uh, reduced the number of debris, because suppose the one was not successful, we'll mm -hmm. have to repeat again and think like that. Mm -hmm. Now, that was our approach. And also to perfect our software, now we had done this kind of a planning. Okay. I, I want to ask you a, perhaps a little uncomfortable question, sir. Uh, do you, are you concerned with the politicization of this breakthrough, of this achievement? I'm quoting to you what the BJP party president, Amit Shah, has tweeted, saying the truth is our proficient scientists always had the talent and capability. All that was needed was the go-ahead from the government. The UPA did not have the courage to back its institutions and people. The NDA under Prime Minister Modi has. Does it concern you, sir, that uh, this breakthrough on the part of the DRDO is getting a political color? I think those who are giving it a political color are doing it always with an ulterior motive. As far as scientists are concerned, once they are given a clearance by the concerned political government or the government body, they work in the mission mode and they decide the time steps right from the design to development to testing and finally launching a system. Mm. This works on a particular mission mode exercise in which timings are decided. It is not synchronized or done with the kind of uh, political atmosphere that exists at any point in time. Okay. We only tell, look, we are ready now. Mm. We are going for a launch. That's all we do. Mm. So to now say that we are 
synchronizing it with the particular activity which is taking place in terms of elections and all that. It is only those who want to belittle the achievement of the scientists and also have mm. some ulterior motives mm. to actually uh, denigrate the present government. As far if this launch would not have been feasible, had not our Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, mm. given the clearance to DRDO about two years back, to for going ahead with this program. Okay, so you're saying that uh, a clearance of uh, to be able to carry forward this uh, uh, test that we've undertaken today was given two years ago? Yeah, probably. I mean, my this is an estimate. I'm not right now in DRDO, but whatever uh, missing uh, uh, technology blocks were there, if <coughs> those have been developed, and I know from my experience the development time for doing such an exercise would take anything between one and a half years to two years. And that's the question that I wanted to ask you. I understand that you're no longer in the DRDO, you're sitting in the Niti Aayog, sir. Uh, so in your assessment, uh, for this to have been uh, carried out in mission mode, as you called it, the government would have had to give the go-ahead to the DRDO at least 12 to 24 months in advance? Minimum one and a half years to two years, yes. Minimum one and a half years to two years. So explain to us, Mr. Saraswath, where does this leave India? Uh, the Prime Minister talked about how this uh, secures uh, India and secures India's space infrastructure, but there are also international treaties that govern uh, weaponization of space, so to speak. Uh, we saw widespread international condemnation of China when it had carried forward an anti-satellite uh, uh, test. Uh, do you believe that uh, the manner in which we have carried out this test will not receive similar treatment? No, you see, we have to understand the following. As far as the warfare is concerned today, it is having four dimensions, not three dimensions. Land, air, and underwater. The fourth dimension which has emerged with the progressive or intense use of the space assets is the space warfare. Now, as on today, the utilization of the space objects is being done by all militaries across the globe for navigation, communication, surveillance, and many other mm. activities. Mm. Besides, of course, large numbers of civilian activities like disaster management and finding out natural resources and education programs and so on. Now, obviously, in a war-like situation, there is a possibility that one could have the in the, if a country is put on to back to the wall, can take steps to play with your uh, space assets. Mm. And that can lead to a very serious situation. And what should be our answer in that situation? For that, asset is the answer. And that is what we have achieved today as a deterrence. Mm. Like we have the nuclear warheads, which we will never use unless provoked uh, to the extent that our back is on the wall, yeah. this will never happen. And that's what we have done today by having asset. We will never use it, but it is a deterrence which will keep the enemy away from taking a step against our space objects. Uh, you know, you said that this is a deterrent now in India's arsenal, and you're right. No country, uh, even the ones that have the capability, have used this so far. Uh, but uh, let me go back to the point that you raised, Mr. Saraswath, about... Uh, uh, about you know, putting the building blocks in place post-2012, your comment also to suggest that people who are uh, raising questions around the timing of this test are belittling the efforts of the scientists. Uh, but what about, as I uh, mentioned, uh, you know, politicization on the part of uh, the ruling party, sir? Uh, the comments made by, for instance, Prime Minister, uh, the party president, Amit Shah, would you say that it's fair uh, to say that just because the UPA did not, or the UPA government at that point in time did not go the, give the go-ahead, you would have been able to go through with this, because as you pointed out, that there were several missing links that needed to be uh, plugged at that point in time. Yes, unless the clearances are given, no scientific activity can be pursued, because it requires the necessary human resources and also the financial resources. And clearance means that these resources are in place, and then the activity was taken. Those resources were not made available in 2012 mm. and 13, which have been probably made available in the regime of Prime Minister Modi. Okay. Uh, in terms of prioritization, because you talked about how there are now four pillars as far as uh, 
warfare and uh, our strategy related to uh, deterrence uh, go? Uh, you know, the argument would also be that is this really a key priority for, for India? Uh, we have seen our armed forces talk about the lack of resources, uh, you know, complain about the lack of budgets. Is this really a priority versus what we ought to be investing in? No, I think the kind of investment which is needed for this kind of an exercise is a minuscule investment compared to what the armed forces need for meeting all the requirements. It doesn't pay, make any major dent as far as the availability of resources for our armed forces is concerned. In fact, it actually strengthens their ha hands today because having proven this asset capability, we have now also proven the capability that we can handle tomorrow an ICBM interception or IRBM interception using the ballistic missile defense infrastructure of the country. So it is going in a positive way mm. as far as the country's defense is concerned. It well, is not a wasteful expenditure at all. You know, a, a thought uh, or a comment, sir, for your colleagues currently at the DRDO who have been able to uh, uh, achieve this breakthrough? Can you repeat your question? I said I a, a, a thought from you or a comment for your colleagues at the DRDO who have been able to achieve this breakthrough today. Yeah. In fact, I would like to congratulate my colleagues in DRDO who have done such a wonderful job in such a short time and achieved such a major breakthrough in terms of developing a very agile and precise kinetic kin vehicle and also the complete software for automated launch of a missile. Uh, that within about three minutes you are able to uh, uh, hit the target uh, with almost zero miss distance and finish the satellite. All this is a great technological achievement. My congratulations and kudos to all my colleague scientists in DRDO and across the country. Mr. Sarvasa, thanks very much for joining us, uh, uh, the former head of the DRDO there, uh, taking us through what he makes of Mission Shakti, its implications uh, and the road ahead for India.